The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds, or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network presentation. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with a Spiritual Renaissance Holiday Special Broadcast. Christmas time, 1987. U.S. and Soviet warships in the Persian Gulf, Iran and Iraq engaged in bloody battle, terrorism in the Middle East, strife in Libya and Lebanon, Nicaragua in turmoil, the world economy staggered by crashing stock markets, approximately 40 small wars going on all at once around the globe, including the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan. And despite all the summit and disarmament talks, with every passing week the global nuclear arsenal increases, warhead by warhead, bomb by bomb, and missile by missile. We stand this Christmas Eve at the most perilous point in all of planetary history. Yet still there rings out tonight the old, old song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. For the promise of Christmas ever remains. The undiscourageable quest for a better world, a higher hope, a new beginning, and a spiritual renaissance of the love of God and humankind within the hearts of the peoples of this perturbed planet Earth. Throughout the world, December 25th is celebrated as the anniversary of the birth of Christ. Although the scriptures did not give an exact date, and later there was no general agreement, the date was finally established in 35 A.D. by the Christians of Rome, Italy, the selection of December 25th was due in part to the fact that it coincided with the greatest pagan festival celebrating the winter solstice. Sun worship was an important part of the religions of the ancient races, and the followers of Christ decided not to compete with pagan festival dates, but rather to incorporate them into their own celebrations. The extravagant orgies of ancient Rome were held at the time of the Saturnalia, in Germany, Scandinavia, and England, there was a December festival in honor of what they called the God of Golden Sunshines, observed by dances, feasting, and religious rites. In Scandinavia, it was called the time of Yule. Through symbolism, the transition to the current observance was a simple one, celebrating the birth of Christ as the sunlight of the spiritual world, drawing pagans away from heathen sun worship. And the joy of Christmas is universal. Bells are rung when princes are born, and they toll a dirge when heroes pass. All nations have their festivals and holidays, but the whole world stands still and pauses for a moment in reverence before this Jesus of Nazareth. As Shakespeare said, so hallowed and so gracious is the time. There seems to be a universal awareness of the fact that peace on earth can come only from goodwill among men. So simple a truth and yet so difficult for the human mind to learn. Listen then for a moment to the poetry of Christmas time. In Finland, they sing this Christmas carol, Don't give us fame, O Lord above, don't give us riches great. We beg for peace, we long for love that stems from heaven's gate. Let Christmas be eternally the symbol of a world set free, not fame nor power nor worldly worth, but peace on earth. O oh, bless us with a kindly home, and grant us wisdom in thy sight. Let children round the hemlock roam, and make their eyes as candles bright. Then home will be eternally thine apogee. Dear Father, grant us on this earth a happy home and hearth. Hold out your hand o'er rich and poor, and make their Christmas true and bright. Let happiness and peace endure, and send the dark one's host to flight. Then peace will be eternally our destiny. We pray thee, God and Lord above, for peace and home and love. Here's a German Christmas carol. O come, little children, O come, one and all, O come to the cradle in Bethlehem's stall. Come look in the manger, there sleeps on the hay an infant so lovely in light bright as day. O see where he's lying, the heavenly boy. Here Joseph and Mary behold him with joy. The shepherds have come and are kneeling in prayer while songs of the angels float over him there. O oh, bow with the shepherds on low bended knee, with hearts full of thanks for the gifts which you see. Come lift up your voice, the child to adore. Sing joy to the world and peace evermore. An old Russian Christmas carol goes, Let us praise thee, O God in the heavens. Let us worship our Lord of the earth. May his good servants never grow old. Let us sing praises to our Lord. Let us sing praises. 
In Wales, they sing this Christmas song. See the blazing Yule before us. Strike the harp and join the chorus. Follow me in merry measure while I tell the Yuletide treasure. Fast away the old year passes. Hail the new, ye lads and lasses. Sing we joyous all together, heedless of the wind and weather. In Yugoslavia, they sing, O ye shepherds, gaze in awe. On a sight no eyes yet saw, Christ sleeps in a stable's gloom, come to save us from our doom. And so the endless singing of the songs of Christmas. The English novelist Charles Dickens once wrote, I have always thought of Christmas time, when it has come around, as a good time, a kind, forgiving, charitable time, the only time I know of in the long calendar of the year when men and women seem by one consent to open up their shut-up hearts freely and to think of people below them as if they really were fellow passengers to the grave and not another race of creatures bound on other journeys. It was on Christmas night, back in the year 1776, that George Washington led his troops across the Delaware River to attack the British the next day in New Jersey. Most human beings, in their own ways, have their own Delawares to cross, things to do, problems to solve. But the promise of Christmas is that with the help of God, truly, all things are possible. Said Jesus of Nazareth, have faith in God. Sir Isaac Newton, who was born on Christmas Day in 1642 in Woolsthorpe, England, was the man who discovered the law of gravity. But just for today and tomorrow, let us repeal the law of gravity and impose rather the law of levity in its place. May the gladness and the goodwill of Christmas be born anew this day within your heart, for God loves you. And in that lies happiness for today, and more than that, more than happiness for today, there lies in that hope for tomorrow. The author Bruce Barton wrote about Christmas, sleepless and bewildered but gloriously proud, the husband of Mary emerged from the stable and made his way to the census-taker's booth. For it was the decree of imperial Rome ordering a general census that had brought them to Bethlehem. But enrollment blanks and reckonings kept the census-taker busy, and all he saw was another peasant standing there in the line. Name, he demanded in a routine tone, Joseph Carpenter of Nazareth, of the house of David. Married? Yes. Wife's name? Mary. Children? The carpenter drew himself up. One child, he answered proudly, a son. Jesus, just born. Was there any comment? Did the petty government official who wrote for the first time the name that was to be above every name, did he wonder as he wrote? Probably not. It was just one more name on the census roll, just another boy. But the influence of the child lives on. Uplifting the standards of action and thought, inspiring laws, enlisting the strong in service to the needy and the weak. And so we celebrate his birthday at the festival of all children everywhere. They are the really important people of this earth, for in cradles and at the foot of Christmas trees are the lives that are to overthrow and rebuild all that we have ever built. Nothing is so powerful or so perfect that it cannot be transformed utterly by the miracle of another little girl or another little boy. For God works not only in large ways, but in small ways too. And the ways, both large and small, in which God can transform your life are delightful and exhilarating to know. So give your life to God, and God will give you life in all its fullness and all its joy. For the Master came proclaiming, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And so this year, this Christmas Eve today, as the sun begins to set in your particular part of the world and the evening darkness gathers and the bright stars begin to twinkle like white sparkling frost against the icy blackness of the evening sky, and as the shadow of night passes slowly from time zone to time zone across the face of this wondrous world, the darkness will be illumined by millions of sparkling Christmas lights, like radiant gems of luminescence everywhere, gleaming greens and reds and yellows and bright whites and blues and royal purples. As darkness falls across our planet tonight, 
our world will look from outer space as it looks only once in every calendar year tonight Christmas Eve and the bells will chime and the people will sing and the growing glowing carpet of colorful Christmas lights by the millions and the millions and the millions will twinkle on to illumine this dark world tonight as no other night of the year until our little planet like a shining Christmas ball slowly turning in the night and lit with these countless colors is garlanded with light from nation to nation and continent to continent across this war-weary world as the peoples of this planet pause for just a moment this evening to rejoice and to pray and sing and worship God and all of this all of this to celebrate the birth nearly 2,000 years ago of a little baby who grew to become a mighty man of God and who thundered forth to humankind the ways of peace on earth and of goodwill to men the love of God and of humanity there is no other hope for peace than that and may the light of Christmas shine more warmly and brightly than ever before within each human heart tonight Merry Christmas. For free literature on the spiritual life, on the new hope which there is for your life in this Christmas season, if you will turn to God with all your heart, that all things can become new. Something new can be born within your soul this night. If only you will choose to have it so. For free literature on the spiritual life, material which I have written on these very topics. If you feel that divine discontent, that inward spiritual restlessness, yearning for a finding and knowing of God, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written some free literature on finding God, getting to know God, growing spiritually, seven principles of prayer, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the spiritual truth which rings down through the corridors of human history that this entire world was intended and created to live as one family of love, the family of God, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, and you are an infinitely valuable son or daughter of this living God in this great far-flung universal family of God. If you're intrigued by this truth, if that rings some sort of celestial bell inside your soul when I speak it into this radio microphone, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vernon and Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.